What up guys, it's Brinks, and today I've got another guide for you, for both smoke haters and smoke players. So, in fighting games, a knowledge check is more or less when you force your opponent into a situation to see if they know how to get out of it. If they don't, you can get a lot of mileage from exploiting this. The counterplay tends to be pretty specific, and oftentimes if you're unfamiliar with the knowledge check, it can feel very strong or unfair to deal with. Smoke has many of these, and based on how people talk about this character online, especially around his cancels, many people would fail most of these knowledge checks. So for today, I've got a list of 15 of them. Each of them is going to start with a knowledge check that you should know when fighting against Smoke, followed by how you as the Smoke player can use this against them if they pass the knowledge check. The first chunk of tips are all going to revolve around Smoke's cancel pressure and the mind games that can be enforced for both players. Then, there will be a few miscellaneous tips before we talk about dealing with an invisible Smoke. Where there is smoke, there is fire. Quintality. Let's get into it. Tip number one. Forward 3-2 is one of Smoke's best strings, if you don't know the matchup. The second hit is an overhead that you can uplock on reaction which deprives him of what would be his best hit confirm and forces him to use other means to open you up. Smoke players, you don't need the full string for a usable low hit confirm. If your opponent starts up blocking forward 3-2, do forward 3 into cancel into 1-1-1-4 instead. With many cameos, you still get a full combo from 1-1-1-4, especially Smoke's usual meta cameos. If you're using Sector, this only works after a stand 1. Number 2. If the smoke player starts doing forward 3 cancels into 1114, or does multiple consecutive cancels while you sit there blocking helplessly, you can always poke them after a blocked cancel if they try to keep attacking. Smoke players, if your opponent starts mashing after your cancels, you are always safe from it except after a down 1, down 3, or 2, 1 cancel, all of which are punishable by down 1s after a cancel. So just hold block after your cancel and you'll block their down 1, which can always be punished with your own down 1 so you can continue your pressure. If you want to take a greater risk however, you can just let the full Vicious Vapors come out and they will get hit out of any non-armored move they try to press as long as you're not canceling from one of the three previously mentioned normals. And if you're using Scorpion or Jax cameo, you can turn this into a full combo to really make your opponent think twice about mashing out of your cancels. Number 3. If the smoke player catches on to your mashing and lets their full Vicious Vapors come out, just hold block and wait for the full move, as it is minus 16, which is full combo punishable. Smoke players, if they start doing this and waiting for Vicious Vapors, they'll likely not be mashing during your cancels anymore. So while they technically can wait for the white flash of the cancel to time their mash and just hold block otherwise, it is still hard to react to, especially online. So, if you've conditioned your opponent to stop mashing altogether, then you can just throw them after a cancel, or forward 3 if you expect them to try to duck the throw. Number 4. Most armor moves will beat several common pressure options the smoke players will go for, and if you're playing a team that can full combo from your armor move, it might be worth the risk if smoke tries to swing after a block cancel. If smoke does the full vicious vapors, or if the smoke player tries to throw you after a cancel. All three options will lose to your armor move. Smoke players, if your opponent shows that they're willing to armor through your pressure options, then just hold block after a cancel. Almost all armor moves in the game are unsafe, and it should be an easy punish if you bait it out. Number 5. If the smoke player catches onto your armor habit and starts blocking after their cancels, you can just throw them. Throws will also stop them from mashing after their cancels, such as the forward 3 into 1114 sequence from earlier. But for whatever reason, back 2 into 1114 
beats throws. Smoke players, if you keep getting thrown after your cancels, there are two high reward options to stop this. The first lower risk option is to just neutral duck. So hold down after a cancel, and if you see the whiffed throw animation, you can immediately punish with whatever you want. A higher risk option is to hold up after a cancel, if you expect a throw. Since you can't be thrown while airborne, you'll just jump through their arms, and you can land with a jump one punish into a full combo. Number six. If the smoke player starts neutral ducking or jumping your throws, then the mind game loops back to tip number two, where you have to mash again to stop them. Down one will always beat them ducking or jumping, but if you really expect them to jump, you can go for your character's preferred anti-air normal instead for a bigger punish. Smoke players, make sure you pay attention to how your opponent deals with your cancel pressure and keep them on their toes. As you can see, there is an answer for every situation, and if you've successfully conditioned your opponent into doing what you want, really take advantage of this until they start adapting or mixing up their own habits on defense. A lot of people tend to have an autopilot reaction to smoke cancels. Usually, in my experience, people try to mash, and some people will just turn their brain off and do their usual combo starting strength. Now let's go over a couple miscellaneous tips before the invisibility section. Tip number seven, Smoke's forward one two is an incredible whiff punish tool and a solid pressure tool, but it's a high with a gap between the first and second hits that you can armor through or even micro duck the first hit if you see it coming to punish him in both cases. Smoke players, your opponent has to commit ahead of time to armoring through forward one two as soon as they see the first hit block, which means you can bait and punish their armor move. So test out the waters by staggering raw forward ones to see if they take the bait. If they start ducking it, you can throw out forward three in the same situations instead to catch them. Number eight, Smoke's forward four is a triple hitting normal that leaves him plus eight. I use this a lot when my opponent is cornered or getting off the ground. It is sort of risky for Smoke to go for, however, since it's a triple high the last hit is also minus two if you flawless block it, which is still safe, but it doesn't let Smoke keep mashing on you afterward. If you just block the forward four normally, Smoke is plus eight, which means you're in a sort of strike throw mix, since both his forward three and his throw will beat any non-armored mash that you throw out. But since the last hit doesn't lead to any combos without specific cameos, it's worth the tiny risk to learn and go for the flawless block on the third hit so that you don't have to deal with the pressure. Smoke players, forward four can be canceled into a teleport or cancel from any of the three hits, even on whip. So you can potentially throw off an opponent waiting to block the third hit or punish after ducking it. Just be aware, this is quite gimmicky as you can still be punished for doing this depending on character and what they throw out. If you do an EX cancel, you are a little less punishable, but it's probably not worth the meter most of the time. Also, most importantly, if they do flawless block your forward four, you are only minus two, which is very similar to a blocked back forward three cancel, so just use the same flowchart from the first half of this video. Negative does not mean punishable. Just take note of your opponent's options and try and stay in their head. Number nine. Smoke has a lot of mobility options with all of his various teleports and cancels. I personally like to use this aerial teleport cancel to get out of the corner or side switch whenever I need to, but Smoke is still vulnerable for a short time after doing this cancel, and he will always teleport behind you at a set distance. So if your character has a fast gap closing normal, don't be afraid to throw it out to try to punish the Smoke player and make him think twice about always teleport canceling out of the corner like I do. Smoke players, don't be predictable. If your opponent stops letting you get away with canceling out of the corner, then start only doing it when your opponent has already committed to something like a projectile. Think of using the move as a whiff punish, but instead of whiff punishing them with an attack, you're whiff punishing them by taking space or repositioning, which is almost equally as valuable. 
and depending on character, you can also jump toward them to bait an anti-air, and then cancel behind them before they hit you with the anti-air, and they'll be unable to punish you once they recover from their failed anti-air attempt. Number 10. Smoke players like to close the distance with back 2 as it's one of our longest range normals. Learn the spacing of the move and pay attention to when the smoke player is staying at that distance. They're probably fishing for an opening to back 2 and start pressure. It's technically reactable, but as this is way harder online, if you learn the max range of the move, you can be confident that the only thing they can hit you with from there at that distance and timing will be their back 2 which you can upblock if you're quick enough since it's an overhead. It's also worth noting, if the smoke player is looking for back 2 and to cancel, because of the inputs of all that, if you make them whiff the back 2, the second part of the string will come out instead of a cancel, which is a low that is very punishable on block and can then be cancelled into any special moves. So sometimes your best option against a back 2 addicted smoke is to just walk back to make them whiff it so that you can then block and punish the second hit. Smoke players, just because back 2 goes as far as it does, does not mean it's your only option to close the distance. Even walking is a solid option. You don't always have to be pressing a button. As usual, don't be predictable. And if your opponent is walking back or you're afraid of the move whiffing and getting back 2-3 instead of a cancel, just do a raw back 2. If you miss because the opponent walked back, you won't be as easy to punish compared to a blocked back 2-3. I've started doing this more when I'm not confident the back 2 will connect, since the risk of a blocked back 2-3 is often not worth the potential combo if back 2 cancel connects. And you still get some reward if you do hit a raw back 2. It's plus enough on hit that forward 1 jails from it, so you can get a bit of a strike throw mix afterward. Though you'll need to dash to reach. A lot of people though, after getting hit by a raw back 2, are probably just going to hold block, so you might get away with a lot of dash up grabs here afterward. Now for the invisibility tips before we close out the list. Tip number 11. Block string into EX smoke ball is a common invisibility setup for smoke. Don't let us get away with this. You can very easily anti-air smoke after he teleports to the smoke ball if he does this off of a block string. If you get hit by the string into smoke ball, however, you're better off just holding block because you're usually minus enough that smoke's aerials will beat anything you try to swing on them. But another easy way to punish this is to just hold up after the block string and air-to-air -air smoke as soon as he teleports. If you get hit by the string, you also won't have enough time to jump. Just be aware, if he does a regular smoke ball and you try to jump after the block string, you'll likely be hit. Though this depends on the block string, most of his strings are safe enough on block that you won't be able to jump over it. Only down 3-4 on block really seems minus enough that you can still jump over the smoke ball. Something weird I found while labbing is that many characters seem to have at least one rising aerial that causes them to avoid the hitbox of the smoke ball, and it even seems to work against some of the block strings where you normally can't jump to avoid the smoke ball. This all seems to make jumping a safer option since you can just jump either way with a rising aerial, and if smoke does the EX smoke ball, you'll hit him, and if he does the regular smoke ball, you'll just avoid it, but you'll land with too much lag to be able to punish him. So this only really seems useful for characters with fast air specials that can start combos, since then you could actually punish Smoke for doing either option, but you should lab this with your own character and see which aerials avoid it and if you can punish him after. Now back to universal counterplay. You theoretically can just hold block unless you see the EX flash, at which point you can jump and air to air, but this is very tight to react to, even offline. If you up block on reaction to the smoke ball animation, EX or otherwise, this will cover both the regular smoke ball, which is an overhead, and EX smoke ball into jump 1, which is obviously an overhead. But if smoke doesn't do an aerial and just lands and grabs or forward threes you, it'll likely punish your up block attempt, since you'll still be vulnerable. But, up blocking to cover both smoke balls or trying to react air to air the EX smoke ball are still probably your best options. Especially since a regular smoke ball will only do 9% unless he has tremor, which is worth the risk to stop smoke from freely going invisible. Smoke players, if your opponent's hitting you out of your EX smoke balls, then you have a couple options. 
prefers is to cover it with a cameo, like a sector missile, to make them stay blocking. Second is to mix in regular smoke balls to keep them on their toes, though keep in mind it's very punishable on block at minus 14. And, as mentioned in the beginning of this section, some people might be able to react to the different smoke balls. And also, it's even more unsafe if they uplock it, so just be careful. Finally, the safest option is to just save your EX smoke balls for when you actually get a hit, and just end your combo with it, so that you can be invisible as your opponent gets off the ground. This will typically be after either forward 1-2 strings. Otherwise, if you don't mind taking the risk to mix with regular smoke balls, then shove some crayons in your mouth and have at it. High risk, high reward is why we play this character in the first place, right? Number 12. Whatever the method of activation, when smoke is invisible and in front of you, he is obviously in a very strong position. But, you have some things that you can look out for. Us smoke players really like forward 3-2, and we really hate when people upblock it. So. Now that we're invisible, we think we are untouchable and can spam it all day while we crunch crayons. So, if you opt to hold block in front of an invisible smoke, pay attention to the hit effects. If they appear below your character's shoulders, like lower on the character model, while you're crouch blocking, that is a low or a mid attack. If smoke does a forward 3-2, it would look like that for the first hit, and then you would have to immediately stand block the overhead. So if you expect the smoke player to try to catch you with a forward 3-2 while invisible, don't be afraid to up block right after you see that low hit effect, and then launch them once you hear the sound that your up block was successful. This will make the smoke player think twice about their forward 3-2 usage even while invisible, and this is likely going to be the first thing to look out for with an invisible smoke. It's usually the first thing I try to check people with to see if they're ready for it. Smoke players. If they still uplock your forward 3-2 while you're invisible, you can trick them sort of by staggering forward 3, or even doing a down 3 to make them think that the forward 3-2 is coming out, since they both will trigger that low hit effect on block, though the effect for the down 3 will actually be a bit lower than the forward 3. So if they do uplock after you do that, you can immediately then do a 4-3-2, and the low will hit them during their uplock for a full combo. Number 13. Invisible smoke has the most control when you just sit there blocking. Sometimes you might want to just start swinging to try and stop him from getting anything started, and if you hit him with anything, even a down one, his invisibility ends and you can breathe again. Smoke players, try to identify what kind of player you're against as far as how they react to you being invisible. If they are one of the fearless players that just swings until you reappear, then try and keep some space from them to see what they do. If they wake up swinging, you can usually just back 2 or forward 1 to whiff punish them for a full combo. Also, depending on screen position or your opponent's habits, sometimes it's safer to use an EX teleport cancel to go invisible in case they wake up mashing. Though you'll have less invisible time to mix, you'll be safe from their swinging and it might be the easiest whiff punish of your life. If they're the scared type of player that will just hold block and pray, or you've conditioned them to stop their filthy mashing, then the instant mix you get with an EX smoke ball might be your best option. But ultimately, how you choose to go invisible will depend on the situation and the type of player you're against, and likely on how many crayons you've already devoured. Number 14. The other main thing to look out for when smoke is invisible is his back too. Your best bet is to just watch for the camera to move forward suddenly, which, from my testing, only happens on back two, forward four, a forward dash, or if smoke jumps, though the jump will have a slight upward arc to the screen panning as well, but it's hard to tell the difference in the heat of the match. So stay crouch blocking, but stand up if the screen pans forward suddenly, because it's probably a back two. This also only applies outside of the corner. The screen doesn't move at all during these moves if you're in the corner. So, uh, I guess just don't be in the corner against an invisible smoke. Smoke players, 
Like with everything else while invisible, you can trick your opponent into reacting a certain way. If they're just sitting there waiting for back two and seem to be reacting to the screen moving, try empty jumping or dashing instead. If they stand block, you'll know you're in their head and can probably do whatever you want next. And if you've conditioned them to just stay crouch blocking like this, they're an easy target for a throw. And as mentioned previously, if you have them cornered, they truly have to guess what you're going to do, especially if you're standing outside of their mash range. Finally, tip number 15. You want to try and waste as much of Smoke's invisibility as possible. He's only invisible for about 3 seconds. Depending on the setup that he used to become invisible, you might not have a lot of options for this. But if you have the screen space, backdashing or jumping back from where you think Smoke is could delay him enough to lose his invisibility. The more time he spends chasing you, the less time he has to try and mix you. And if you happen to get hit while jumping, it could even mess up his combo, or at worst, be much shorter than it would have been otherwise. Also, depending on your character, you might have some options to create some extra distance from him, but just overall, try to keep track of his position as best you can when he goes invisible, and pay attention to how the smoke player behaves when they are invisible, to see if they're the aggressive type that just wants to mix you. Or if they're more patient and they just sit there waiting for you to throw out a panic option. Smoke players, if you have to chase your opponent, you'll likely not be able to get anything big going, but given Smoke's mobility, you can still close the distance quick enough to pressure them before you reappear. If they're jumping, snipe them with a Shadow Blade or teleport cancel to them and try to anti-air. It'll all depend on their habits and the exact screen position you're at when you go invisible and the setups you use. Just remember, you have much more control over the match at this point than they do. And depending on your cameo, you might even be able to cut off some of their escape options with a cameo move, or outright launch them from full screen without even needing to chase them. So get creative. Alright guys, we're at the end of the video. If you made it this far, you're fucking awesome. Whether you're a smoke player or a smoke hater, I hope this video helps you out. And I hope it makes up for the fact that my 30 minute smoke guy didn't talk about his invisibility like at all. But let me know in the comments if any of these tips were new for you, or if you have any that I didn't cover. And as always, comment if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them as best I can. If you want to show support, liking the video would be awesome, and if you want to see more guides like this, then please subscribe. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Later. Quitality. Smoke weed.